Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Justin. In this video, I'm going to do my best to explain to you how to size your solar system. So the first thing you want to determine is the location of where you're going to be putting your solar array. Will you be putting it on a roof or will you do an in-ground mount system? And while that's important, the roof mount is typically a fixed array, meaning it's placed on a racking system and it doesn't move. So it sets at one general degree. On a 412 pitch roof, you're looking at roughly 20 degrees. If you're doing an in-ground mount where you have a lot of options, you can have it fixed at a certain degree. And this becomes very important between the summer and the winter, uh, what degree that your solar panel are facing. It makes it more efficient if it's facing at certain degrees during certain times of year. So as an in-ground mount, you're going to have that option making a one axis maybe that you'll automatically adjust throughout the year. Maybe you'll adjust it several times a year. An automatic tracker that just goes, it's called a one axis that goes like this. So uh, in the winter, your array would set more, let's say this was the array, it would set more like that. And in the summer, it would set more like this. Now you do have a option to do a dual axis. So it tracks much better and it's much more efficient, but it's much more expensive. The most important thing on a solar system for efficiency is the direction that it's pointing. You do not want to face your solar system north. You want it facing due south. And due south is recognized to be the most efficient direction when placing a solar array. Now you want to find the azimuth degree. Uh, typically, you're going to be setting somewhere around the 180, uh, maybe up to 220. You can go like 160 to 220. Let's just give that a ballpark area. You want to try to get it within that 180 range. That's the, the standard. And something that's pretty important is you're going to have to find out how much energy consumption that you've consumed over the last year. If you have more data than that, even better. But you wanna to try to get at least the last 12 months of the energy consumption that your family consumes over a, at least a one year period. And the way you do that, just contact your uh, utility company, get the last 12 months of your statements. So the first thing you wanna do is take all 12 month statements and you wanna add up the total kilowatt hours that you've used over a year. Generally, you're gonna be anywhere from probably 10 to 20,000 kilowatt hours per year. Well, I guess that really depends on the size of house that you have. So if you have a very small house and you got a lot of energy efficient equipment uh, that you're using, like your refrigerators and um, AC units, depending on how you run those things, you may be well below that 10,000. Uh, say you got a large house and you got three AC units, three heaters, and just a lot of energy consumption going on, you may be well over that 20,000 uh, kilowatt hours per year. So you just want to make sure that you have some type of basis to understand how much energy you're actually using over a year. Once you have your last 12 months statements, you're going to be able to determine how much kilowatt hours you use over a year. If you can get two years, three years, four years, that's even better. All you would do is take all those numbers and divide it by the number of years that you have. Then you got your average uh, yearly consumption that you're using. The more data you have, the better. Now, once you find out exactly how many kilowatt hours you're using in a year, that summer, um, fall, winter, and spring, because different seasons, you're gonna use a different amount of electricity, especially if you have all electric heaters, all everything that you have is electric, and you're trying to power your entire house 100%, then it's important to know what your average consumption is over one year. And a great tool to size that system is going to be on pvwatts.nrel.gov. You'll go in and you'll put your address in, then you'll put in the perimeters of your site and the details on your solar array and play around with how many kilowatt hours you think it's going to take to power your house. Now it's very important to consider what type of solar panels you're going to be using. Understand their efficiency. So you're putting up solar panels that's right now producing at 98% efficiency. 
over a 25 year period, that may drop down to 80% efficiency. So you want to factor that in for the long term. So if you're putting in what you think is right now, so at 25 years, 20 years, even 10 years, those solar panels are not gonna be producing what they are when they're brand new. They will lose efficiency year over year, all the way out to the end of their life. So you wanna make sure to take that in consideration. How much efficiency warranty does the solar panel that you're putting up, whether it's in ground or on a roof, what do they offer? In a sense, it's important to determine whether you got a grid tie system or a off grid system. Because if you have a grid tie system, you could overproduce and get paid back for it. If you have a, a tariff agreement with your local utility company that pays you when you overproduce. If you are off grid, you want to try to get this as close as possible. You don't want to be overproducing. You don't want to put too much money into your solar array to overproduce because that's just going to be harder to get your return on investment back over time. It's just going to take you longer. So you're going to put more into it and it's really not going to pay off. So in case you plan on expanding, you know, wherever you're living, if you're going to expand your consumption, yes, you want to do that. But if you are overproducing and you're not getting paid anything for it, you're wasting uh, produced energy and you don't want to do that. So all of these factors are very important in sizing your solar system. It's not just one factor. Every one of these I feel like is just as important as the other. So that's why I want to touch base on all of them. So I have other videos on solar. If you would like to check those out, I'll put a link right up here or a link in the description below and you can check those out. Stuff like how to wire a system or, or how to do your combiner box. How much did my system cost and how to build it yourself. We didn't pay anyone to install our system. We didn't go out and find a professional to install it because we did check into it and their cost was just ridiculous. So we decided that I would start building the system and we got some help with putting it up on a roof a couple family members come out and helped us do that. But other than that, this, this system was built by one guy all the way up to the roof. And then we had a couple guys come out, family members come out and help uh, install it on the roof. So it is possible that you could build your own solar system, even if you need electrical diagrams, electrical inspections, because I needed all that. I needed to do the tariff with the electrical company. It is possible. You could build your own solar system. Stick around with me. If you like these type of videos, be sure to smash the thumbs up button. Leave me a comment below. What size solar system are you going to go with? And I hope you found this video helpful for what you're trying to do in your solar project. And I appreciate you guys hanging to the end of the video with me today. And I hope to see you in my next video. Until then, I'll see you.